Thank you, Brother Billy. If we could just get him excited, we'd be all right. Uh, one of the things that I was praying for this week was for the students as well, the student camp. Uh, I was talking over here that with Billy that so many young people that I know that have come to know Christ that are now in full-time leadership were saved in youth camps, student camps, and uh, such a great opportunity to see uh, lives change and I even had the opportunity once to lead a, a youth camp down at Sardis. We used to have them down there years ago when we were having a church in Whitehaven. And we go down to Sardis and 4-H camp. And I mean, that's when we had camps. I mean, really camps. <laughs> you know, instead of, I know I've been on some, some of these, and I'm not against it, but a lot of the student camps now are in, are in the college campuses, and that's great too. But I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. The verse that he read here, that, I, that was one of the verses that I was thinking about today, and we'll be talking a lot about the scriptures and of the Psalms, you know how many Psalms there are in the Psalms? 150. <laughs> there's 150 Psalms. And uh, uh, there's one for about every occasion or need in your life. If you ever wonder what you need to hear a word from God, it's always been encouraging to me. The scripture was Psalm 119 verse 18 where it says, Open mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things from your law. One of the things that I need to do, and I think not just for me physically, but also spiritually, uh, I need to be alert when I come before God and try to seek His guidance for my life. Uh, I'm one of these guys, I've been working, I worked at Federal Express for a number of years, I got used to getting up early and, and having different hours, and, and so for me, getting up early is not that hard of a thing. And so I like, I like the quietness of the morning. That's just me. I like finding time when I can be alone with God. But I do ask God to help me to physically be awake and to be alert. So when I begin to read the scripture, I'll understand what God's trying to teach to me. And so this is one of the prayers that I pray for myself before I even try to read the scripture. That I ask God to open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from the law. And so once again, I mentioned that from a physical point of view, but as well as for a spiritual point of view, that I want to hear what God has for me and, and walk in obedience. And then an, another scripture there, he talks about delighting in the Lord. He said in Psalm 119, 6, then shall thou not be ashamed and have respect to all thy commandments. He talks about delighting in the scripture. And then in the next verse, in uh, number three in your, in your uh, outline there, is the family altar. Now, I don't know about you as families. I know that uh, one of the things that I try to do regularly with my wife, our kids are grown and they're gone, but I always try to have prayer with my wife on a daily basis. I need that. We both need that. We have, we have decided to say that's part of our daily routine. And, and I, I never leave for work until we've prayed together that morning and that we spend time alone and and so this, this is something that we have done. And uh, if you have a second, turn over to Psalm 78. Let me get you to do that to Psalm 78. And I won't talk particularly here about the issue with men being the spiritual leaders of their homes. You know, all you have to do is watch the news about Memphis on a regular basis. We know that there's a, there's a missing element to the young people in, in, in our communities, and a lot of it is because there's not a father there to take the responsibility of what they're supposed to be doing. And in Psalm 78, verse 1, the scripture says, Give ear, O my people, to my law, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth, and I will open my mouth in a parable. And we know that Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus would use an earthly illustration for a, a spiritual application in our lives. And so he talks about this here, and he says, in Psalm 78, give ear, O my people, to my law, and incline your ears to the words of my mouth, and I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old. And what he's saying here is, this is nothing new that we need to know. Amen? This is nothing new. We just need to go ahead and apply what we've already heard and make the application to our lives. And he said, he says, I'll open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. These are things that have been spoken before which, now get this, which we have heard and known and our fathers have taught us. So he's telling us this is nothing new. We've already been taught what we need to know. Amen. We just need to do it. We just need the application. 
And he says, we will not hide them from their children. And he says fathers there. You may have a different interpretation or, uh, of that. I saw ancestors, but I like the idea in the scripture here where it talks about the fathers. He said, and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children. Telling to the generation to come praises of the Lord. And so I just want to read what I, what I wrote here. He says, my people here in my teaching, listen, listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter hidden things from of old, things that we have heard and known, things of our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and of his power and the wonders that he has done. Now, I don't know about you, but we've all seen God do some great things in our lives. We've seen God move mountains that we couldn't move. We've seen God heal people that we didn't know they could be healed. And I want to tell you, God still does great things. Amen. And he goes on to say here, he says, uh, let me get back. He said, we'll not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation of the praiseworthy deeds to the Lord, his power and the wonders that he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob or Israel and established a law in Israel which he commanded for our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. So he's saying not just your children, but your grandchildren and your grandchildren, children. Amen. That's where it needs to go all the way back. And so he talks about this. And, you know, let me just keep reading this. He talks about the fathers there. Look in verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob, and he appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, and the generation to come might come to know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God. And he says, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and, a stubborn and rebellious generation. And so here you see God addressing an issue of their rebellion and their stubbornness. They were not following what God had wanted them to do. And he said they did not set their heart aright. Let me just say this. All the issues that we see here where there's problems, it's all a heart issue. Amen? That's what he said. They did not set their heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. And then he keeps going on. He says, the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. Now, this was also a, a literal battle, but also a spiritual battle. They turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God, and they refused to walk in his law. And, if, and they forgot the works that his wonders uh, that he had shown them. And then he keeps talking, verse 12, marvelous things that he did. All that God had done in their life, marvelous things that he did in the sight of their fathers. And you keep seeing the word fathers mentioned. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through on, on dry ground. He made the waters to stand as a heap. And then he goes on to say this. He says, verse 13, uh, verse, excuse me, 14, in the daytime he led them and with a cloud and, and at night a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness when he gave them water. And let me just say, they were not supposed to hit the rock. They were supposed to speak to the rock. But yet God still provided their needs. And he said he also brought streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down. And then you get to verse 17. And this verse amazes me. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for food for their fancy. You know, they, they wanted quail <laughs> and uh, they, wanted the, they wanted the right stuff. They weren't, they weren't happy with manna. God was giving them manna. I don't know if you ever get to the point in your life, you just, you know, you're at home and I, you may not even have this issue, but you eat the same thing every morning. <laughs> you know, you try to spruce it up a little bit every once in a while, once in a while make it a little more special or whatever. But for, for day after day, week after week, months after months, even years had passed. All they were doing was eating manna. But folks, we, all, we ought to be satisfied with whatever God gives us. Amen. Whatever that is. And so he tells them this. Let's go down to verse 17. 
but they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the in the wilderness. And they tested God in their heart by asking for food for fancy. So anyway, we see here in this psalm how God is working in their life and that God wants them to turn to them, but they are continuing to turn down what he wants them to do. And the issue here of this family altar, uh, I will say this. He says he keeps addressing the fathers. Men, once again, it is our responsibility to be the spiritual leaders of our homes. It, we are men, it is our responsibility to pray with our children. It is our responsibility to teach them the Word of God. It is our responsibility as fathers to be the spiritual leaders at home and at church and make sure that we're living the life that we're saying that we're living. And so anyway, let me just say this, talking about the fathers. Uh, look at verse 17. They sinned even more against him, rebelling most in the most high, asked for food for fancy, and let me just say this. I heard, I saw where David W. A. Quiswell made a statement years ago. We are always one generation away from apostasy. We're just one generation away. And, let me, and when I look at what we're seeing today in our culture, uh, we're, we're in desperate need of God to move. We need to ask God to, and let me just say this. It starts with us as men. Amen. I mean, that's where it starts. God has put us in the place of responsibility Number one, to love our wives like Christ loved the church, sacrificially. We are to teach our children the Word of God. We are to live the Word of God in front of our children. We are to make a difference in this church. We're supposed to serve Him faithfully. And so anyway, we're supposed to do that. So let's, let, me, let me go down in my outline there. We've talked about the family altar and teaching the children. And then the Word of God is to be memorized. Uh, I was given a book recently from the pastor, and I, I was looking through it the other day, and and we, we were, we've been talking about discipleship and, 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 um, and memorizing Scripture as part of our, uh, what we ought to do, amen, as Christians. We ought to memorize the Scripture. And uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just mention this uh, about memorizing Scripture. Uh, we need to hide it in our heart, amen. Uh, let, let me go to the Scripture, Psalm 119. Go over a little bit. 119 to verse 11. Familiar verse. Your word I have hid in my heart. We ought to memorize the scripture. You know, I was thinking today, I remember years ago... I was working with young people, with, with students, with youth, and I, I remember we, we had had some challenges that we challenged our, our, our youth to do, and, and uh, it was during the Salt Block Ministries when we were doing that in Whitehaven, and I remember, I, I remember we, uh, we gave our youth a T-shirt if they could memorize Psalm 1, which is a great scripture. And let, let's look at it for a second. It said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth its fruit in its season, and its leaves shall not uh, uh, drive away as chaff, he said, but we shall prosper but all are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the ungodly will perish. So anyway, the Bible says here that God will bless an individual. I want to encourage you to read Psalm 1, Blessed is the man. And so anyway, he says here this is what we should do. And then finally, out of... Um, out of, out of out of Luke, last, this is the last scripture I'm going to turn to, but out of Luke chapter 24, uh, we're going to look at another verse about Jesus and, and walking with Jesus. Uh, in Psalm 20, excuse me, Luke 24, let me get there real quick. Luke 24, Luke 24, verses You 
know, we've talked about having our eyes open before the Lord and asking for physical and spiritual guidance of the day. And we're, to, we're, we're to respect all the commandments. We're supposed to have our family altar as, as men with our families. We're supposed to put Christ first as the men in the church and in our lives and in our families. And then in Luke chapter 24, I want us to go over to verse 13. And this is a scripture after, after the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Jesus was walking on his way to Emmaus where he found two other men on the road to Emmaus. And let me begin in verse 13. Now behold, two of them, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all those things which had happened, speaking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And they talked about it, and so it was in verse 15. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, and they did not know him. And he said to them, this is Jesus speaking to these two disciples, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? And as you walk and are sad, verse 18, and then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you, the, are, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and have yet, and, and have you not known these things which has happened there in these days? Now think about this. Jesus has just gone through this death, burial, resurrection. He's already performed some other, he's had meetings, he's been around groups of people, large groups. And so he, he decides, Jesus decides to join up beside these two disciples that weren't sure about what was going on. And so he says, do you know about these things? In verse 19, he said to them, what things? So that's interesting. Wouldn't you like to have been in that discussion? What things? And so they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were all hoping that he was going to redeem Israel. And indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. And yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. But when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And then he, Jesus, said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets had spoken. And God help us not be slow of heart. He said, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, talking about a Bible study, <laughs> Beginning at Moses and all the prophets and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself, then they drew near to the village where they were all where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to say with them, Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. And I love verse 31. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And I love verse 32. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So here, let me just say this. The beginning, Psalm 119, verse 18, Scripture says, Open my heart that I may behold wondrous things from thy law. And then when we have the opportunity to sit through all the things that God has taught us, I love verse 32, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened, I love this, while he opened the Scriptures to us, folks, if there's anything that we need, we need to open our eyes and, let, and our ears so that we may hear and that we need to be, let him open the scriptures to us. Amen. 
And so it says here, then they went on and they had the resurrection day and, and the blessings. But I just want to encourage you today, have a time, have a quiet time where you spend time with God on a daily basis. I recommend having a place where you go at the same time every time where you know you're going to sit down and have a time with Jesus. And let him open the scriptures. Let him open, as it says in the early part of the Psalms, let God open our heart that we may behold wondrous things from his scripture. And then when we listen to him and let him speak to our hearts, may we let him open the scriptures to us. And I love what he says, did not our heart burn within us when he offered to us, when he read to us the scriptures? Let me pray with us. Father, I want to thank you for the word of God. I want to thank you for the Psalms. Lord, I thank you for the scriptures. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have a perfect plan for us. Lord, I thank you for the word of God that gives us direction. Lord, wherever we are in our walk with you today, I pray, God, that we would fall in love with you even more again today. I pray, Father, that you'd help us to spend time with you, to love you, to know you, to share you with others, to memorize your word to be able to be equipped for the, for the world that's out there, that we'd be ready and prepared spiritually for the spiritual war that's out there. And Lord, that we would be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, that we would follow you, that we'd be obedient, that everything that we would do to bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen.